Welcome to Yorkshire Man Models. Today we've got an, an Edward FW190A8 Weekend Edition in scale 148 and I'm going to build this specifically so I can use this Mobius airbrush, the 0 0.2, to show how good a camouflage scheme you can get with this kit. Let me just show you. There. I'm going to do this one because I, I like the snake it's got on it. And I'm going to do it because it's got all of this like camouflage motley type scheme all the way around it. So I'm going to build it and do that one, which is the November 1944 German one. And I think, with a bit of luck, I'll get a cracking looking kit, especially with this airbrush at the moment. It, I've had a couple of more goes with it, and I'll tell you what, it's getting better every time. So, let's get cracked on, let's get it built, and let's see how we do. And by the way, this is quite a reasonable price kit, this. So, if you're thinking of buying an Edward one, and you want to get them weird, you ain't got all that photo etch and that, weekend editions are a perfect buy. It's showing you here A and B, there is two different parts you can put in. A, a clear one, well flat, plain one, and then you put a decal on. Or you can do what I'm doing here, I'm putting the one in that's got raised detail on it so I can paint it up after. It's a little bit intricate and tricky, painting little tiny pieces, but it, it does add a bit more of an element to it when you, you're doing it. You'll see it's my usual glue I use for when I'm doing most of my modelling, the Tammy R extra thin. Works wonders. It's a good plastic and all this from Edward. I've always found Edward's plastic to be nice. This is just a Tammy R grey. I can't remember the exact one it was, but I'm just blasting it on all the cockpit areas. I've got that many Tammy R greys, it's unbelievable. I don't know why I buy them all. You can make half of them yourself just by mixing a bit of black or white in. But this is where I'm on about with the ones what are different. You have to paint your own detail on it. You can see there it's extremely hard trying to paint dials and stuff like that. But I give it a go. I always think it looks nice. And to me, anyway, I'm the one that's doing the model. And I always think, yeah, it's a little bit of personal detail. But it is hard when you're trying to do them like that. I'm painting up some of this here. It shows you like some of its silver and all that. But I'll be honest with you, you're not going to see a lot of it once all the rest of the uh, propeller and that's on. But just getting enough difference in colour and that into it so that uh, it looks all right when you, you, you get a close-up of the actual aircraft. This is just a flat varnish and all I'm doing is putting this on so it protects it this white glue well white lidded glue should I say it's the thicker version of glue and it allows a bit more drying time it's not so instant so and it also I find it works really really well when you've gotten paint there compared to the uh, extra thin I mean the extra thin will work there's no, no doubts about it. I just think that little bit more strength you get from that is better. That slots into a recess as well, and it's got a little locating mat, so you know you're getting it right way around. And the two pieces of the uh, fuselage should sit nicely together, and they do. Just make sure you get all it into all locating pins properly. You can see there I'm using a mix of both glues and that way I'm getting, as I feel, it's the, it's the best bond. I mean, I've, at the minute I've got the white lidded one in and now I'm going to start adding to the edges and just laying it run down the seam like that. And that will help joint it all up nice and tight there. The guns, right, <laughs> you can see there, you're putting it in like that. I am going to break that off. There is no fear in it. So before that happens, I'm cutting it off now. I've just put a little scratch on it so I know where I'm cutting it. 
when I finally get my fingers on it. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to... Whoa, that's another thing. Watch you don't fire it off into space. But I'm going to put the small piece in a tub and then I can put them in at the end. So at the minute, you've just got the gun there. that will be seen, so you need to put it in. It's, <laughs> I will break small parts off. It's just what it is. I am not the kind of model who, who sits there and he never, he never does something wrong. Never have been, never will be. I'm a model who does it because he's happy to do it. I am not a perfectionist. These wing parts just join together again, like before. Just get down them seams and you've got it perfect. You've got a lovely seal. I do like to sand my edges. You know when I've glued them like this, and then that way you you, you take out anywhere it's not perfect, as they say or something, and, and it makes it look a bit nicer. That fitted in lovely, that. Just went straight in. Half at time, you get these where you you bond in one part at bottom and the misshape and half at time wings and all. So it's not this. This were perfect. These are the two. You put a great massive piece in like that, and all you see is that two tiny little bits sticking out there. But they're the machine guns there that you have to put in. And then that'll go down onto the actual aircraft there well sorry no that piece goes in first and then that one we've just done there will go on so that's the channels where the machine guns shoot down these just push in and then you just glue them up not special about that it is a nice design though it does it lovely we we'll see the same with back there, nice slotted points for you to push it in and then you're just sticking a bit of glue on it. You don't have any problem with it really. Well, the detail, as you can see already, there's, it's absolutely chock full of it, the actual uh, small detail on it. I, I do think it's great. You can set these if you want, up or down, depends on the person. I like to have mine up, because when I've got it on ground, a lot of the time they walk. But then again, I've seen them when they're pointing down or so. Hey, however you like it. These are the undercarriage, you know, the wheel sections. You're just adding a few bits to the actual body set door frame, whatever you want to call it. But I leave the wheels off till end, because I like to paint them separate, and then I'll put them on at end. The wheels are pretty simple, they're three parts. You've got obviously your tyre and then your, your other bits, but you just glue them together like this. I don't like I say, I like to keep them separate and that way I can paint them up. I've got a like a, a disc cutter or whatever you want to call it. It cuts masking tape and I can put that over centres. It will make it a bit easier when you're painting. The propeller is, again, simple. You've got a couple of parts here. You can see them all there. There's four parts, technically. Them two bits go together for the propeller itself. Then it's going on to this piece here, like that. I'm gluing these together, because this can all be painted as one. But the nose, over the top, I'm not gluing that on, but I'm just going to show you. It just sits over it nicely like that. I'm keeping that separate so I can paint it different. I've got to put a decal on that and all, and it's the worst ones, I hate them. This is just a drop tank or a bomb or whatever else you've got that you want to put underneath it. I think it gives you a few options. But there's only two parts to that, you just glue it together like so. This is the frame section that holds like either your drop tank or bomb, whichever you use it. But I was worried that they were going to break, but they never did, so that were all right. Right, I'm going to attempt to spray this Mr. Finishing Surface of 1500 Black with my Mobius 0.2. This might be a bit of a mistake in all honesty because it's very fine at 0.2. I might be better off 
just using the 0.3 but I'll try it if it don't work I'll swap over to a 0.3 airbrush which is where I normally use for this we'll see when I'm spraying primers I like to put a thin coat down first and then when it's dried a little bit I like to then go over it with a slightly thicker coat that way I tend to find you get a more even spread of the paint rather than trying to flood the area out with it uh, it I just find it's a better system myself I mean a lot of people just blast primer down I mean these rattle cans chuck eight ton of it on and they always come out lovely so it's just your preference what you like to do I'm starting off with spraying because this is the one I'm doing the B version underneath you can see there's some yellow which you see in there as well I'm going to spray that first because I think that's going to be easier to mask up after than it is to mask it once I've sprayed underside and then spray again. So I'm doing it now. Put that round just to try to control the actual uh, spray itself so it don't go everywhere so much. Get a bit of this yellow down. We put it on in thin layers. Build it up. This paint that I'm putting down at the minute is the ammo or Migas they call it a lot of it. It's the acrylic one and it's RLM 76 Pale Grey. It's what it says on instructions and I tend to try to follow them as close as I can because most of the time nowadays the instructions you get are usually right when it comes to paint colours. You've got to put it down really thin though, thin coats and then go back over it with this. These, this paint I'm using this time is the RLM 74 Dark Grey and that's from Mr Colour and that one's C36. This one's a bit more forgiving, you can put it down a bit thicker, it's a, a really versatile hard paint and it doesn't seem to blister and crack like others do. This next one here, which I'm freehanding now, which in all honesty it's one of the things I'm not a greatest fan of, but I, I do have a good time to time. This one is the Mr. Colour, uh, Mr. Robbie, Mr. Colour, you want to call it again, C37 RLM 75, just grey that it's called. And it's it, it's one of them, this is where you're testing your airbrush now properly. When you're trying to put down lines like this on it, where you, you don't want to overspray a lot. That's where you can tell the difference when you're getting the thinner needle the airbrushes rather than the 0.3s. I mean, I've even got a 0.5. You would never try and do this with a 0.5. Not unless it were a really, really good airbrush with a lot of fine control. This seems to be doing it absolutely brilliant. You can see there. Very happy. Now, I'm going to do this mottling effect, blotches, whatever you want to call them. I'm having a go anyway and it's one of the few things I hate doing on German camouflage because I tend to end up stuffing it up but you can see when you, you, you're watching it I, actually it's coming out that's brilliant the fine control you've got with it is very very nice it really is you do have to watch the tip drying but you get that on every single airbrush there's some of these I will go back over a little bit after and make them darker because I want them to be slightly different colour I don't want them to all be exactly the same because if when you look at the actual picture it shows you what you're trying to follow they're not all exactly the same the different densities as you call it but it, it's working fine Oop. And then I do that. <laughs> like I say, I hate the most perfect model, but it'll blend in. It really will, because that's what you're wanting. You're wanting it to be messy, because there was no perfect about it. This, it's Tammy R Clear Gloss, blasting that down. This is so I've got a coating over it for putting my decals on. Now, a lot of people say you don't need to use it, and I'll be honest with you, I've always done it near enough. For, forever now some paints if it's a, if it's a flat paint not a glossy one 
you need to use it. it just makes it easier for print decals on like this you don't get that silver in behind that's all but that's it's everybody's choice if you want to do that do it if you don't don't it's just something i do and if you want to follow it you can if you want decals sit down nice they're very thin they're a bit of a pain uh edward decals and in all honesty the the the, the one thing i've never quite got right with these kits that they do i i, I struggle with them the peeling of them because you meant well i say you meant you don't have to take it off but you can take the carrier film off but you, you'll see later the problems with that but these decals they've all gone down okay the one for the snake were a little bit tricky but other than that not being too bad that's the easiest way to put a decal on if you can now i'm putting a, a black pin wash on it or whatever you want to call it just so i can get it into all these uh, panel lines and stuff like that just to get make it look a bit more realistic bring out the detail as they say you don't have to do all of this this is just m what you do to try and make it look a bit nicer but you just put it on and then you just wipe it off with a tissue once it's dried you take the surface top bit off but it will and, and it does it on every model that i do when i do all this it will darken up a little bit the paints that you've put on this time i'm just putting a, a little bit of uh, weathering effect by the silver the aluminium color to make it look like it's the chips that have hit it and stuff like that i'm not going mad I'm, I'm not i mean i've done some models before and i feel like i've ruined them i've done them that much so i'm just going to do a little bit around the front stuff like that a little bit on wings just small amounts and i find this is the easiest way to do it it's just a bit of old uh, sponge and like that this is oil brushes how i use it i put a little tiny bit into that there because it's easy to control when you've got a smaller brush that brush head on that oil brusher is quite big in all honesty and when they're trying to just get a little bit in like that you've got to be you've got to be careful of what you're doing and all i'm doing is just bringing it down like that from edges but i'll do this all over the model i'll do it in areas where i want to dirty it up more if you make a mistake and you think to you and i don't I, it's, i'm not happy with it it's too much or whatever you can just wipe it off with a bit of white spirits it'll just wipe clean off you'll not have a problem with wiping it off some people say put a flat varnish on before you do this because it helps it stick i and this is just gloss still from before i'm just going straight away with it you can see like this you just work your way around it it takes ages but it's a worthwhile effect if you wanted to dirty something up what i'm putting on here is just a bit of fine black charcoal i've just scraped off of a stick that you can buy you get them from any artist shop stuff like that and you can just make the the mucky smoky effects or whatever from guns firing from the actual engines that kind of thing and now i'm when i've done all that this is me matte finish now it's going down because i wanted to see everything i've done in it's windsor newton you'll have heard me a million times before if you've watched my videos but it, like i say it's my favorite it's cheap and it works absolutely fantastic it takes a little bit to dry but at the end of the day it's it's so good you, you, you're willing to wait the time time for wheels to go on now and these just easily <laughs> push in like this you don't have a problem with these the summer them when you get them and they have a flat part on wheel there ain't no flat part on this not on tire should i say now you'd think modern day they had all of them put you a flat bit on but they haven't we cop it on now and there's that damn decal it took me ages putting that decal on i'll be honest with you it went on and off about four times every time i thought i'd just got it right when you looked at it you started moving it around in your fingers you realized it weren't the undercarriage now all getting glued in and we are now really starting to make the model come together we've seen it now 
towards the final finishing stages. The back wheel, just make sure you gate right way around, otherwise it'll look a bit daft, but saying that somebody's probably telling me I've got it wrong way around. The <laughs> the uh kind of pit here has got a piece that fits in and it has got some ledges that you just sit it to so just make sure you push it up like that there to them and you, you just use a couple of dobs of glue and it's fine put the bomb or whatever the the well the external fuel tank i think is what most of them carried to be honest but i do believe they carried bombs there as well trying to glue that on And it's going to be a case of getting it on, yep. And I'm going to put it down and I'm going to leave it to go off. Because likely others I'll knock it off if not. And these are the guns. Putting them in now. The, the ones that, well, cannons. The ones that I uh, cut off. But there is other ones as well to go on. Just push them in place and then I can paint them up then now that they're in there. Like so. They are fine, they are super fine, and they are nicely detailed. They have actually got a little indention in the top, so you can see that it's meant to be the hole in it. So, and a lot of them, you don't even get that, a lot of manufacturers. And this is the bigger cannons going in there. Well, four of them done there, you can see. And now I can paint these up does look quite well actually this is just tamiya's uh gun metal that's it yeah gun metal color i don't like painting usually with tamiya with brush it is a bit of a pain and a nightmare but if you get it done quick enough it does work i have used as you can see there rather than the uh normal white glue or something like that the with a little tiny bit of the uh, Revel glove there, the contactor. And the reason for I'm using it now is the cockpit's open on this. So I know that as the glue goes off, it's not going to fog up the canopy. And in fact, to show you how much I'm using, this is the only bit that's gained any on here. That's it. Because it's it's really the only bit that's properly sitting down to aircraft. Because it sits where that groove is. There. And the rest of the canopy is not actually really touching any aircraft. It would be if you pushed it forward and closed it up. But not how I'm doing it for it to be open. Just got to be, leave it. Don't don't mess with it. Leave it once you put it on. Because it's only a fine part that it's glued in. Propeller on and we are done. And it's another kit built. But more than anything, it's my first full one that I've done using the Mobius and I'm going to be honest with you it's performed fantastic I, I really cannot knock the airbrush the only thing I can knock and you can see it already I put some tape over trigger thing because I mean I've got builders hands fingers because that's what I do on my roof but even that continuous pressing of them they're just a bit too sharp them ridges just a little bit so that when you're pressing and using it for quite a while, it starts digging in and well it hurt mine anyway. Some people might not have a problem with it or whatever, but it did get to mine a bit. But other than that, really, really can't knock it. It's it's in my view a fantastic buy. I'll put a link up on me uh, in the video so you can see but uh, so you can look at them to buy if you want to buy one or whatever. It's up to your it's your decision. But as for the kit, wow, for the money I've paid for that, oh, there's a colour there, get rid of that. The money I've paid for it, it's unbelievable how good a kit this makes. I mean, I've got to be really gentle because some of these fine parts now are really, really easily broken off. I don't know what you all think to me weathering, whether I've overdone it or not. Just give me a comment, if you will, up in the video because it, it does interest me to know what people think about my actual. Uh, like weathering or my RF built and everything and I, how do you say it keeps me motivated makes me want to build another one maybe less weathering if people don't like it or more if people want to see more but yeah and then on the other side 
I've done a little bit of chipping as you can see not done too much I've not tried to go over the top now technically there would have been a wire running from here to about there and then one running down but I've not put it on I've not added no extras whatsoever the kit is how the kits come and that's why I'm saying you look at how nice a finish I've got with that as a kit itself that's how good Edward R kits the only thing that's laying me down with Edward I'm gonna be honest with you is decals I am you can probably just see it here the paint there I ended up painting this one I did the old I'll try and take the uh, film off and worked well on that one absolutely brilliantly and as soon as I started on that one killed it just peeled apart and it's like oh again putting them on and all some of them started to peel a little bit there's a little bit there that started to peel and that but I've made it look like it's just a scratch damage but in the end I didn't bother trying to peel them or anything like that I just went with uh, just spraying over them gloss coat seal them in and then eventually went matte varnish goes on I think it hides any kind of uh, do you say silvering or anything like that there's no silvering they never seem to silver though Edward but like I say, it, I'm, I'm going to stop even attempting to do it anymore. It just does my head in when I'm trying to peel them. Because you think you've got to peel them to make them look better. And really you don't. Just leave them. Honestly, at the minute, that's how I feel with Edward decals. Other than that, beautiful kit. An absolutely fantastic looking aircraft, if you agree. I don't know. Some people might think it's a, the BF-109 looks nicer and all that. I just... I don't know why, but I, I just really like the look of these. They, there's just something about them. I think it's it's just is it is it's just how, how that little bit of difference how it's designed. Uh, the the engine comes out here, all of that. It's just just well the exhaust should I say just makes it look that little bit nicer if you ask me. Catches the eye more. But anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, really grateful if you'll. Give me a thumbs up, even better, subscribe to the channel, you'll get to see when videos come up. If you're into this, if you're into model making, I'd be surprised if you weren't, if you've watched my video a complete way through. But you might have watched it just to see how the Mobius performs. But if you're really into model making, or you like airbrushing, because I do a lot of airbrushing videos, and new airbrushes that come out, and that one that come out, I'll put them up. Subscribe to my channel. You you'll get to see my videos as soon as they pop up that way and thanks a lot for watching and i'll catch you all later